So I'm back in the studio. I say back for you guys. I didn't go anywhere because the last video was setting up these salt water tanks. But I've been in America with Matt for like a week and a half ago now. So I've given Matt today off, but obviously the show must go on. I've come in and checking all the tanks. Everything looks pretty good. A uh, couple of minor problems. And before we continue, I just want to say a massive thank you to API for having me at their booth all weekend. Now, I did not get to film anything from the show at all because we had queues of people for eight hours on both day continuously. And we just felt it was far more important to meet and greet and take the time with everyone that had traveled so far to see us. I think that was far more important than going around and getting video. So yeah, thanks API for that. And as a bit of a show of appreciation, I'm gonna be showcasing a few of their products in a video that I use regularly for maintenance. Most of you know all of these anyway, but it's real, it's what I use all the time, and it's why my tanks look so fantastic, as well as the work we put in, of course, as well. Oh yeah, and we had a cool photo booth at the API stand. So if you had your photo taken with me and Matt or or whoever, I'll put the pictures up at the end of the video so you guys can have them as well. Most of them delivered, some of them didn't, but yeah, I'll put it all there so everyone can have a look as well if you didn't get to go. So before we left for America, America. Um, the tank here developed a slight ick problem and all the fish were actually affected. I'm not sure what it was, maybe the stress of the bigger fish, smaller fish, getting the hierarchy sorted. So I actually stopped in yesterday for five minutes before I went home straight off the plane because I just wanted to check everything. And there was quite a lot of ick on every single fish, like more than when we left. We treated the tank before we left, was expecting to come back and it be cleared. It wasn't, but it's okay now. So yeah, as you can see here, obviously the water's a little bit tinted, it needs a water change, but uh, I'm not seeing much ick at all on any of the fish. Here is the uh, big Royal Akara here, and looking pretty good, maybe the tiniest spot of it I can see. So what did I do? Well, I just upped the temperature of the tank. The Oase filter down here has got a built-in heater, I just turned it up to full, which is 32 degrees, which puts the tank at the right temperature to kill off the ick. And it seems to have worked like pretty much overnight. I think I'm gonna keep it running for a few more days um, and we should be good. Actually, I better check that. Do I need to just keep it running for the life cycle, seven days, or do I need to just keep it running for a couple of days till I can't see it? Yeah, so I've just read that the ick can only last 48 hours when not on the host, i.e. the fish. So they've dropped off today. So I'm gonna keep the temperature up for a few more days and uh, yeah, we should be good then. And when I come in this morning, I did see some of the catfish that we put in that I haven't seen since we put in, so that's all good. I am only seeing one of the Royal Acaras though, but it could be the case that the other two have paired up and are in the cave system in the back. Hopefully they'll pop out soon so we can see them. I have to say though that Kate did a fantastic job whilst we were gone. No dead fish anywhere. Last time we had a little bit of an accident with the uh, rainbow fish tank, but we're all good. Well done, babes. We made it nice and easy for us. You knew how to feed every single tank and what needed what before we left, so that worked out perfect. Oh, you might have noticed as well, the uh, spout is up. That's because we put in the ick treatment and it can lower oxygen levels. So we just made sure we had that pouring like that the whole time we were away, and then we knew there wouldn't be a problem. The caras are looking fantastic though. Look at the coloration on this one. If we can get it focused, there you go. Oh look, oh, oh, a little bit of aggression. That means there's possible pairing up. Not those two, but uh, this one seems to be protecting that area. So maybe we'll get some babies. There's plenty of places for them to hide down the bottom. So yeah, we could get babies that survive as well. I have bred a caras before to the point where they were wigglers. Uh, never past that point though. Look at that, wow. That little one there, absolutely fending off the massive Royal Akara. Nice job. So the tank needs a tidy up, to be honest. It needs a water change because there's quite a lot of tannins in the water. The thing is though, my water butt is set to the temperature of the room and not what I've now got this set to, which is like eight degrees higher. So I have to be a little bit careful. I might put some hot water into the water butt and just keep testing the temperature, bringing it up. And then when I put it in, it'll all be matching. I'll add a dechlorinator as well. So yeah, I'll be using API Aqua Essential to do that. Um, API have been sponsoring the channel for so long now. You guys know I use all of their products all the time. And Aqua Essential was brilliant for like getting tap water just perfect straight away. So this bottle removes chlorine, chloramines, and heavy metals from the water itself. 
That's what I'm going to want it for in this instance. It can also, if you add it to your tank, detoxify ammonia, nitrite and nitrate as well. You just use a higher sort of volume or quantity of the, uh, of the liquid. It tells you on the back exactly how to do it. So if you're getting spikes in anything and you just need to quickly like sort of nullify it, this stuff works perfectly for that. But when you just want to purify your tap water and make it perfect, the tiniest amount you need, which means this whole big bottle here lasts for ages. So it's really good value for money as well. So this is the water bar. It's actually full to about that level there. So I'm gonna to top it up with hot water, like really hot water, and that should bring it up overall. Obviously I'll be testing it as it goes in, but when it's filling, this is where I need to add the uh, Aqua Essential to. Right, there we go. I've put the pipe in from the tap. The hot water is just blasting into the tank now and uh, it's going in so hard that it's gonna stir it all up as well. So we've got an even temperature throughout. And I can now add in the Aqua Essential as well. Bloop. There we go. So I'm now topping up the Archerfish tank and I can take the, uh, this is from the water butt and I can just test the water temperature straight away. Just reading like about 26, 27, which isn't high enough at the moment. So we need more hot water before we go and top up the uh, Akara tank. So adding a little bit of warmer water to the Archerfish tank, it's not gonna make any difference. It's not gonna harm them at all. You know, you wouldn't wanna be putting like real cold water in because that could drop the temperature quite a bit, but a little bit of extra warm, all good. Now, whilst all that water's mixing and we're topping bits up and that, I can turn off the filter and the heater. Otherwise, I've done that before. I've turned the filter off and not the heater. That is never a good idea. Turn them both off, drain the water right down and bring it back up again. I'm not gonna do 100% water change or anything like that. I'm probably gonna do 50 though. It's quite a lot of tannins and uh, any of that ick that's fallen off the fish will hopefully get taken out as well. I don't know if that's how it works, but I'm hoping it is. <laughs> So there we go, look, all looking much fresher again. I'm really pleased actually that the Echinodorus that I planted is doing well, because I was worried for a little while that it wouldn't grow, purely because it's only in a tiny amount of substrate. But as you can see, look, we've got new leaves. That's a brand new leaf right there growing through, and there's even more in the center. So that's growing great. That'll be thanks to the uh, nutri base that we put down in that area. And it's the same across this side as well. Look at this one proper growing out, those, those nice red leaves. They're gonna get more and more red as well. The crypt that we placed here in the middle, initially it sort of melted right back. Some of the leaves remained and now it's growing back again, so that's good as well. And you can see all the brand new color on the Ludwigia palustris at the back there, look. All those top tips are the new growth, so it's growing even more red in this tank than it was previously. That's probably because it's right underneath the light, look. That's about the height that red starts. If I planted it much lower down, you can see the lower down uh, stems are more green, but once they get into that right area that's getting the, the light intensity, they'll go really red. Still a fair bit of sort of dusting on the plants. That's just from all of this dragonstone flaking off as the, uh, as the fish make their own caves in it. And still a little bit of ick I was noticing then on some of the uh, candy cane tetras, but that's gonna come off now. The heat is really working. They were absolutely coated as was every other fish, literally like a day ago. So I'm confident with that. And I get lots of questions from people asking um, how you grow red plants when I don't really use CO2. Well, I don't find that you need CO2 for red plants. You, you sort of just need like a higher light intensity and then the, the plant needs to be a certain distance from it. If you've got a really bright light, then it will reach right down to the bottom. But usually without CO2 and a really bright light, you tend to get algae because the plants don't grow like really fast and absorb the nutrients. So I find that uh, reds go really red as they grow taller. And these superfish lights, they're not even RGB, it's just white LEDs. So yeah, it's not even a case of that. It's just purely light intensity. So next to the Akara tank is the angelfish tank, which is looking amazing. I've come back to it looking perfect. It's quite sort of grown in, but I really do like the look of that in this particular tank. So I've been sort of, not overdosing, but dosing more regularly the leaf zone in this tank. And as a result, look, everything is looking amazing. The tetra, the tetra are growing big as well now. They school quite a lot and they spar as well. Matt thinks there might be some sort of hierarchy and uh, breeding going on. We wouldn't know, of course, because, because of that lot. It probably does need another snip up. Um, yeah, we can do that quickly, can't we? There we go, look, nice little sort of trimming shaping, I would say. I didn't go too extreme. Just any that was sort of flicking too high, I trimmed off. I left the reds because I want them to have a little bit more growth before I trim them. Because when I do, I'll just re-push them back into that section. Not even into the substrate, just sort of poking them down into that zone. 
the roots will eventually find the substrate and they'll just keep growing absolutely fine. But yeah, looking pretty good. I love this tank and I'm gonna carry on with what, what I've been, and I'm gonna carry on with what I've been doing, which is adding the leaf zone. So yeah, this is the leaf zone, as many of you have seen it by now. Leaf zone contains iron, potassium and magic. Lots of magic. So I only need one capful of magic just to keep all this growing really nice. Always give stuff a shake up first if it's been sat around. One capful and maybe a touch for luck as well. <laughs> oh look, my big angels come out to the front. That's like the absolute prize one of the tank. Looking good. Because I poured something in, they all think they're getting fed. Maybe I should feed them. So yeah, I've got my uh, aquarium flake that I always use. These guys know it. I swear they know colors, like they know the blue look. Here we go, sprinkle, sprinkle. Look at that, lovely. Most of the angels come to the front now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think there's one more, possibly hiding. Oh my goodness, look at this big burfer down here. I did not even know I had cherry shrimp in this tank. They must have come across for some plants or something, but that is massive. Hang on, look, it's as big as my finger. Wow. And we've had another upgrade over in this section over here. So you see down here, Kate's just setting up the new fridge because this fridge, the freezer section was just like a tiny in fridge section and wasn't keeping the blood worms frozen. But this one, look, we've got a whole top proper section, stock it out with blood worms and uh, anything like that. Cause we like to feed blood worms as well as the flake as well. Certain fish, like for instance, the, uh, the archer fish, they will not eat anything but blood worms. So we've been packing them in there and they're looking nice and thick. Well, these guys are anyway, more to it than that, to be honest. So about two weeks ago, uh, me and Matt, Matt and I, I think Matt and I sounds weird, but you guys keep telling me that's what it has to be. So Matt and I saw a couple of the archer fish with these little sort of ulcers. One of them had it on the side of the body, the other one on the tail and a little bit on the mouth. And we started treating for it straight away. It's had several treatments since, but those two just kept getting smaller and smaller, pinched in, even though they were eating. They're not entirely sure what the problem was, but uh, they're no longer in the tank. We didn't remove them. I've come back from uh, America and there, you know, there's no body. Um, that makes sense though, because the loaches in here will absolutely decimate anything that drops to the bottom. <laughs> but the four that we've got left seem to be doing incredibly well, never showed any signs of sickness. Could have been a dominant thing causing the smaller of the, of the six to become uh, more prone to infection or something like that. That's more than likely the case. We never ever saw any sort of bullying or anything like that. So it probably isn't completely that. They could have just been like weaker fish. And I think that is the case. We tried to treat them, like I say, loads of food, we upped the feeding, but they just, yeah, they didn't, didn't seem to do well and they passed away. But like I say, the four that we've got here are the biggest of the bunch. And they're also the ones that aren't really shy as well. So that kind of makes sense. Hello guys, hello. Now we, uh, now we did think about removing the sick ones and putting them in like a different tank, but they got so used to this tank, that's, that's more than likely just gonna cause them even more stress. It just wasn't meant to be, but yeah, these ones are doing fantastic. I mean, yeah, just look at that, the thickness of the body, one waiting at the back there as well. I'll try and get them forwards. I have fed them today already. It was the first job I do when I come in in the mornings, just to make sure these guys are fattening them up. Because we know how fussy they are as eaters, and uh, Matt started it first. He said, just, let's just get the blood worms in there, see if they like that. If you put the blood worms into the water column, they're not interested at all. You literally have to stick it on the glass or they're, yeah, not having it. Here we go, look, I've got some blood worms. I've drained them and washed off all the sort of salty liquid, literally just sticking clumps of it to the edge of the glass. They probably won't shoot this off because I've raised the water level since I got back and they'll be able to jump for this actually. I probably shouldn't put it too high near the surface. They can't jump high in the river this tank anyway, so we're all good. Spread it about a bit. Hopefully they go for a, go for a spit. Calm down, calm down, calm down, come this way. That's it. I'll put the rest in for the loaches and the uh, Danios as well. Look at that straight away coming forward. They can see me stood here. So they're so much faster now than they were before. They just know the drill. We've been doing it routinely. Not normally do we stand right here. I'm going to sit down. There we go. Look, I'm sat right back now. Right out of the way, right at my desk. Got the zoom lens. I mean, they can see it instantly. There we go. It's almost like they know they're being filmed. It could also be because I fed them this morning a good amount, so they're not desperate for some. But that will definitely go throughout the day. It will not be there. 
a little bit of time. He likes to look at that bit. Yeah, look, see, he jumped. He's like, I don't need to spit for that. I'm just going to jump at it. Oh, there we go. There's a good clump there. Nice amount getting down in the gut as well. And now he's done that, the rest will come forward and have a go as well. What's he going to do? Is he going to jump? I think they're a little bit higher, those ones. I'm not sure he will jump for those. There is four guys, by the way. One of them staying back. It always is a little bit cautious, the other one. Yay, there we go. He's going for his spit option. There's tons there. <laughs> no, I don't need to put it lower. They will... Kate just said, maybe you should put it a bit lower. I don't need to put it lower. Normally, it's higher than that for them, so... They just take their time with it, to be honest. Just coming back and forwards, taking little spits. A little bit... Whoa! <laughs> this one's got... Oh, yes, good jump. Really good jump. Now, they like jumping as well. It doesn't have to be just spitting. Like, if there was a bug on a leaf close to them, they, they will jump for that as well. <laughs> there we go. I think it's easier for them to jump for it because they're getting more of a mouthful in one go. And then obviously the little bits that fall off, we've got all the Danios, which aren't getting any attention at all. Sorry, guys. So the Danios tend to stay in the background areas. And then certain times of the day, they're all out in this foreground, just swimming around left and right. But not this time of day. We're about midday. They don't tend to do it then. But the loaches, for instance, like this one, swimming up and down, backwards and forwards all day. So they're always active. There we go. Look, there's one, a couple on that side as well. They love it. They're always out in the foreground area here. They're, another one. Oh, the archer's just got a big load down look. And uh, Danio's come shooting out. Here they come, look. There we go. There's one of them. They're getting much larger now. They've got great coloration on them as well. Danios are a great fish for a longer tank like this because you do see them zipping backwards and forwards really fast. That reflection is annoying me. I should have closed that, shouldn't I? Hang on. Can I do it like this? Oh, 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 there we go. Yeah, so these guys will just keep coming back to this until it's all gone. Most of it's gone now already, to be honest, but yeah, working really well, chunking them up. It's a shame about the other two. Uh, we tried our absolute best, but uh, wasn't to be. Now, in terms of the fish wall, everything's sort of present and accounted for. Like. The whole, all the tanks have held up really well. I was thinking we might get some algae, something like that, because the tanks are a little bit older now and they're like in that sort of algae phase that they would be. Now, Matt put like little stickers on the tanks that didn't need feeding because otherwise Kate would have just, you know, gone everywhere with the feeding and she didn't need to in these. It would just be like waste just sat in the bottom and she doesn't know to not feed again if the waste isn't eaten. I suppose we could have explained that, but I didn't want to over flood her with information. Just feed the tanks that don't have stickers on. So yeah, it was quite interesting. And as you would expect, any tanks that have got shrimp in, like this one's got shrimp, no shrimp, no shrimp, no shrimp, and then shrimp and shrimp. All the ones that haven't got shrimp have got a nice little bit of algae going on in there, which means they will be nice and mature for some new, um, new shrimp to go in when we get some. Now, what we're gonna do with the shrimp tanks is not clean the algae on the sides or the back of the glass. That's just really good for them to feast on. On the front, we'll just clean that because obviously it needs to look nice, need to be able to see in the tank. But if you've got shrimp tanks as well, um, they say that you should just keep that algae on the wall. It's just really good for the little shrimplets when they're born because uh, the other larger food sources are probably too big, but they'll eat that algae and the biofilm that's on the tank itself. Now, as for the rest of the tanks, that are holding all the fish, I could not have asked for any better results. They are all doing perfect. Initially, I was a little bit dubious as to whether the plants would grow, considering the fact that there's no substrate, there's just a little bit of decorative sand, but they are growing <laughs> insanely well. This one here, a little bit of algae on the glass, but to be expected, same of all of them actually, there's a little dust in, but that's easily taken care of if that's all that it builds up in like several weeks. Before we left, we dumped in a load of leaf zone. It's really helped everything just take off. Look, I mean, the plants at the top here, they are growing out of the surface. They will need to trim back because I know what I'm like. It'll just get over the top in no time. The pearl weed is all growing beautifully at the back there as well. I've got pearl weed in basically every single one of the, well, almost every single one of the tanks. I say that, it's not in that one. But yeah, I've got a nice big chunk of it growing there as well. That's because soon I'm going to be doing a uh, scape that requires quite a lot of pearl weed. I'm going to be doing a pearl weed carpet. I think it's the easiest plant to grow as a carpet. And as you can see, when you've got it in your tanks like this, it wants to grow tall, but if you keep it short, it keeps spreading runners and runners and runners. You have to stay on top of it, but it's so easy to trim uh, when you've got the time to do so, which I now do. Yeah, all the fish doing great. We've got these albino cories in here, absolutely gorgeous. There's some more down there. They like this little spot here. 
They like going in and around all of those stones and sort of pecking at it. I'm not sure why, maybe some microfauna or something developing in there. I'm not complaining though, they, they seem to enjoy it. One tank I'm really impressed with though is this one for the uh, Keyhole cichlids. They're looking so vibrant and lovely, putting on some good size. I wanna do a tank just for them eventually. I just think they're such lovely fish. Very understated and not very flashy, but I don't know, really, really cute personalities, really gentle and can do so well in larger groups as well. Now, before we left, we did have that problem, remember, with some of the, uh, the piping popping off for the air system, but Matt went around and glued it all and it's all stayed, no problems reported at all. I was calling and speaking with Kate every day, obviously, whilst I was away, and she was like, yeah, it's all running fine, sending me videos and pictures. So that was really nice whilst we were away. We are completely, like, sort of comfortable that everything was well looked after and doing well. And if I'm not mistaken, the red cherry shrimp tank has got babies, like, that tiny one you can see there, they were all like bigger than that when we put them in for sure. And we've got another one look there on the moss ball. So yeah, these guys are breeding, which is fantastic. I mean, I've never struggled to get babies to, not babies to breed, but shrimp to breed before, but I have had some troubles in getting the shrimplets to grow out, mainly probably because I was using filters with like inlets and stuff that get caught in them. But obviously in a sponge filter like this, there's just more biofilm and more food for the babies to feed on, plus they don't get sucked up and into anything as well. So much bigger survival rates, really happy with that. So I suppose, yeah, I need to go around and just give each bit of the front glass a good scrape in. Well, I'm gonna use a mag, you know, like a cleaning magnet for them, just much easier because of the space available. There we go, that's all of the tanks looking good again. I topped up the shrimp tanks just with some fresh water. I always find that's absolutely fine for a little bit of a top off. Don't even match the temperature because uh, they might think the rains are coming and they might, uh, might breed a little bit more. It's not gonna affect the overall temperature, maybe a slight drop, but you know, we're only adding like a, that much to the top. I tell you what though, it's absolutely fantastic to know that I can just go away when I need to for like a week or more now and everything must just be running completely fine, especially as whilst we're away, we got a delivery of a lot of fish, a lot of money spent, but I think it's gonna be worth it in the long run for future builds. We've got big tanks to fill, even bigger tanks come in. So I've never really done that properly before, but yeah, it's gonna be so cool, stocking up the whole system with new fish. The ones that we've already got in there can be spaced up into certain tanks. Some of them are free, and also some of them can go in some other already running aquascapes as well. So we're gonna have plenty of room for these new fish. So one of the tanks I'm really pleased to say is doing really well is the Mabuna cichlid tank here. It's, uh, apart from some slight green spot algae on the glass, everything is doing great. And just before we left, we put in a little few stumps of uh, easy grow Limnophila sessiliflora. Sessiliflora, uh, I think that's how it's pronounced. Um, because that is a well-known plant that just gets eaten by these kind of fish but it's actually growing in this tank. <laughs> really surprised, we were expecting to come back and see just little nubs of it in the sand, but it's growing. One of the leaves is covered in sand because it appears that the, uh, the cichlids wanted to spit it out. What's quite funny actually is that there's always pockets of sand on the plants in here, and obviously sand can't get that high unless the fish take it up and spit it on there. So that's definitely what they've been doing. There's tons of little breeding caves everywhere and uh, you can see the territories. They've set up territories now. I think what I'm gonna do in the future is add even more rock because we've got this big rock space on one side and the other side has kind of not got as many places to hide. Uh, I say hide, but you know, create territories. There's a lot of fish in here now. They're, they are getting bigger, for sure they're getting bigger. So the original ones I got in, they are like a, a really thick, chunky size now. The newer ones, they're still a bit smaller, but um, I think they're just younger fish. So they're just gonna take a little bit more time to get that size on them. So when I set this tank up, I was worried it was gonna be one of those tanks that requires way too much attention but it's actually been the opposite. Like I barely do anything to the tank. I've kept the lighting levels just right. We did get some sort of like mulmy stuff on the surface down here and a little bit of um, cyanocyano bacteria um, as well. But since adding in the power head at the top, it's just ch chucked that, not chucked, but like sort of keeps the flow going in that direction. Not enough to move the sand everywhere, but enough that if the fish are swimming around those areas, it sort of kicks it up into the water column filter takes it out. Now on the Anubius, yeah, there's a little bit of green spot algae and that kind of thing, but I'm not too worried about that. It all looks sort of natural and the plants are growing. 
And green spot algae, out of all of the algae, is the one that I can fully tolerate, to be honest. It gives it a more natural look, if anything. It's the string, it's the filamentaceous, filamentaceous filament sort of um, algae that you really don't want. You know, the stuff that just comes in strings and just wraps around everything. None of that in here, which is absolutely fantastic. And all of the clumps of Anubius have got at least one new leaf growing out at any one time. I wasn't expecting huge growth. Obviously with lower lighting, it's gonna take time. But I am pleased to see that all of the boost is doing really, really well. Definite new leaves, and we weren't sure if the Mabuna would eat it. We couldn't find any research to see if anyone had put Booster Philandra in a tank with Mabuna cichlids before. I mean, it's an expensive plant, isn't it? So to put it in and just think, well, that's probably gonna get destroyed usually not worth the risk but i am pleased to say that yeah they don't seem to touch it at all again time will tell because they are still quite juvenile they're not big boys are they so we have been feeding quite a lot of um, veg tabs you know like algae wafers and that kind of thing and they do get a good amount of food if you're keeping them full i guess they don't need to scavenge around so much for the for the plants or maybe they just wouldn't have touched them anyway hopefully from bringing them up in an environment where there is plants and they know there's food coming they'll just continue to just to do that. A little bit like an elephant that's got like pegged down when it's a baby, won't try and rip the peg up when it's older. Is that even close to an analogy? I don't know, you, you decide. <laughs> but yeah, the only thing really needed to do on this tank is just a quick like glass scrape. And it's, to be honest, it's only the front pane as well. Now, what sort of update would it be without an honorable mention for our buddy Timmy here. He's doing fantastic. He's being sport absolutely rotten by Kate as well. Yeah, the first thing she runs over to straight away is Timmy. We can see why, can't we? She always says that he's smiling. Look, he does look like he's smiling. Now, I didn't tell her, but he does run up to the glass like this for everyone, but it makes her feel special, so uh, yeah. He's still got all his buddies in with him, look. They're doing well. Haven't seen any new babies in a while, so I think there's males, that could be a female as well. These are Odessa barbs. They've been breeding in here with Timmy, which is uh, quite astounding really. I didn't think that would happen. And the babies have been able to grow up. It's no real surprise because Timmy's so derpy that he's got, not really got any chance of catching them. Uh, I'm really pleased with how the tank's looking though. Excuse the reflection, but we're right next to the desk. Look, this, this is literally where I sit to edit. And then Timmy's right here, perfect. Gets loads of attention. When he was over by the door, never really saw him apart from when I went in and uh, went out. But now I get to see him constantly because I'm constantly coming back and forward to my desk for doing editing and stuff like that. But the tank's looking good. Normally with turtles, because they produce so much waste, you do tend to get like quite a lot of algae. But this tank's doing so well. And I think that's in part due to all of the uh, moss that we've got at the bottom here. It's absorbing a ton of nitrates just to keep growing. It's getting quite clogged up. But to be honest, that is so much better for Timmy. He can then go and hide when he wants to. And when you feed him, he takes his food and goes into that sort of massive pile there to, to eat it in safety, thinking no one's gonna be able to take my food from me. <laughs> but we're not gonna anyway, buddy. But yeah, he's doing good. He's, he's growing. He's getting bigger, as, you, as you'd expect with age. He's always been small because he was really, really tiny when I got him, the smallest of the bunch. But if you look at his shell now, look, look at that. It's getting like proper rounded and thick there's like a thickness to it and he's just looking so healthy loving you buddy so yeah we have got so much planned i don't know if you remember the last video though we talked about the salt water tanks they are obviously still sat here because just after we set them up we went to america but hopefully matt's gonna be back soon um it's been quite a few days so yeah he's feeling a bit better, but he's not ready to come back just yet. And that's absolutely fine. We want him fresh, don't we? So we can get this, these tanks up and going. I need his help with that. And you guys know it as well. It's all new to me. I know the basics, the very basics, but you know, we want to be able to teach you guys as we go along as well as me. And then we've also got two more tanks over in this section, four foots, ready to go as well. There we go, look at these beauties. Loads of hardscape in them. I know what I'm gonna be doing in one of them, possibly this one, actually, I'm not sure. I'm gonna be doing a Iwagumi with an easy carpet implant. I'm gonna do a pearl weed carpet. I've done one before, it grew crazy, and I absolutely loved how good it looked. I've got these giant rocks down here to go in it as well and it should look fantastic. Something you guys can do as well because it is so simple. It doesn't even require CO2. CO2 makes it faster, but it doesn't require it at all. Then I'm thinking in the other one, I'm gonna be doing more cichlids again. I love the cichlids. Uh, they're just that side, look. 
I love the cichlid so much and it's worked out so well that I want to get more. I'm talking African cichlids. I'd really like to do the peacocks. The haps is it? I, again, it's going to be a learning curve for me because I don't know a huge amount about them, but I didn't know anything about the Mabuna either and that's just been going swimmingly. <laughs> so yeah, that's the end of this one. Uh, hopefully Matt gets better soon. Wishing him well. Nice little update video for you all and everything's just looking good and it's just gonna be getting better and better. I can't wait for those new fish to come in and I'm really looking forward to unboxing and showing them all to you and to use the fish wool exactly for what it has been made for and that is stocking it with new fish. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Make sure you subscribe and things and click stuff and uh, yeah, see you on the next one.